is Google covering for Kamala Harris? It's August 19th, 2024, and these are your headlines. Representative Lance Gooden is demanding answers in a letter to Google CEO Sundar Pichai about the Kamala Harris campaign's use of Google search ads to manipulate news headlines. According to Representative Gooden, Google's allowing the Kamala Harris campaign to buy ads that mislead voters by linking to news stories with altered headlines that appear favorable to the vice president without consent from the companies involved. And this strategy creates the impression that particular media outlets are endorsing Kamala Harris when they aren't. Calling Google's actions yet another disturbing example of election interference by the world's largest search engine, Gooden sees the manipulation of news headlines as a, quote, deliberate attempt to mislead voters by falsely suggesting endorsements from major news publications. And Representative Gooden's letter emphasizes Google's bias against former President Donald Trump, of course, and the many attempts by Google to obstruct Trump's ongoing presidential campaign and to censor stories about even the assassination attempt just last month. Specifically, Representative Gooden noted examples of biased Google search results, such as searches for President Trump, which returned favorable stories on Kamala Harris first, and searches for President Donald, failing to show President Trump's name in the little autocomplete drop-down list. As Texas Scorecard reported in early August, the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia found that Google's business practices illegally inhibited competition and violated federal antitrust laws. In December of last year, Google's anti-competitive practices also resulted in a multi-million dollar settlement. Parents of two children in Dallas ISD are suing the district after they say their children were targeted by the former superintendent's unlawful mask mandate. Now, go back in time, if you will, all the way back to 2021. Governor Greg Abbott had just relaxed COVID mask mandates throughout the state. However, former Dallas ISD Superintendent Michael Hinojosa announced at the time that he would continue to impose a mask mandate on students in the district. Now, for medical reasons, two students who received documentation from their physician refused to follow the mandate while attending George Bannerman Dealey Montessori Academy in Dallas ISD. The parents of the students alleged that the district retaliated against their children. They said staff segregated and targeted their 5th and 8th grade children for opposing the district mandate. As a result, the children and their parents have filed a new lawsuit. It alleges that as a result of the superintendent's mask mandate, Dallas ISD staff began a three-month campaign of abuse and neglect, targeting the two kids and their parents for their audacity in standing on their constitutional, statutory, and natural rights, and for demanding defendants recognize and honor those rights. Dallas ISD allegedly forced the children into toxic, unventilated plexiglass cages, physically separated them through daily isolation in the school library, isolated them from their peers during lunch, manufactured a false major school disruption, and blamed it on the two children to use the incident to send them to an alternative school, and released the children's confidential school and private and private health information. Lauren Davis, one of the parents of the children, told Texas Scorecard that The lawsuit's not about the mask mandates themselves, but to hold Superintendent Hinojosa and other staff accountable for her children's cruel and unusual punishment. Hey folks, Chris Salcedo here. I've got something special for you, the Salcedo Storm podcast. As your friendly, liberty-loving Latino, I bring you a mix of engaging discussions to help us fight for our state and our conservative values. It's the perfect way to stay informed and engaged in what's happening around you. So what are you waiting for? Don't miss out on the storm of information and entertainment coming your way. The Salcedo Storm podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts. Attorney General Ken Paxson has launched a counterattack against the Biden-Harris administration following its attempt to force employers to make accommodations for employees' gender identity. Paxson says starting in April of this year, the Equal Equal Employment Opportunity Commission began working to alter what constitutes workplace harassment in the 1964 Civil Rights Act, specifically a rule issued by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission broadened the definition of discrimination by making both state and private employers liable to lawsuits if they don't make accommodations based on employees' gender identity rather than their biological God-given sex. 
The issued rule attempts to wrestle employers into compliance with gender delusions, such as compelled use of preferred pronouns, allowing biological males to access female restrooms, and dispelling any sex-specific workplace dress codes. Attorney General Paxton argues that they've overstepped their authority and are working to circumvent federal law while simultaneously violating the Administrative Procedure Act, which determines how federal agencies issue rules and regulations. For more of today's stories, go to texasscorecard.com.